Alexander the Great was only 18 when he crossed the Bosphorus and began his great march of conquest. He beat Darius first at Issus, went south to Alexandria and took Egypt, returned, taking Palestine on his way, beat, uh, beat Darius again at Arbela and so to the Indus. And in the wake of Alexander's armies came all the culture of Greece. Remember that to the Jews any graven images of any kind were forbidden. Yet now on all sides they found themselves surrounded by some of the finest sculpture the world has ever seen. Then to the Jews, beauty is largely a thing of the mind, and life lived in books. Yet now, all over Syria, they saw springing up perhaps the fullest example of social existence the world has ever known, in the form of the Greek city-state. These ruins are actually the ruins of Palmyra, a little north of Palestine, and built a little later than that time. But they are a very fine example of the architecture of the Greek city-state. And as you bear in mind these ordered ruins and the planned city, compare them with the narrow, twisted streets of Jerusalem in which the Jews live and which they love. And then perhaps you will feel something of the impact of Hellenism on the Jewish mind. The last kingdom of the Jews was called the Hasmonean or Maccabean kingdom and was so fanatically religious that even on its coins they would have no graven images, just the gate of the temple on one side and the altar of incense on the other. Here is a modern coin of the same value, about two shillings. Before Pompey, the Roman Empire was established on both sides of the Mediterranean and after his campaigns, it encircled the whole sea until Jerusalem and Judea were included. And to give some idea of the might of Rome, we have shown the great temples of Baalbek up in the Lebanon Valley just north of Palestine. Though now these temples are ruins, everything in them is the largest of its size in the world. These are just the foundation stones of those great pillars you saw, and you can tell their size from the man. The pillars above them are 75 feet high, and above them again a cornice 20 feet high. Here is a piece of the cornice on the ground. How stones this size were got up nearly 100 feet, nobody quite knows. Then in the wall outside, there are the three largest stones in the world. A fourth is still in the quarry, and each of them is the size of an ordinary cricket pitch. Nobody knows how they could move these. What is quite clear is that a people that could build on this scale would not long tolerate the opposition of a little sect like the Jews. 